Hey folks, welcome to the show. Here's part two of four for the Trade Deadline Ultimate Guide videos. Uh, I'm going to be out of town this weekend, so unfortunately I probably won't be able to get the uh, Western Conference parts of this series until after I, re I return uh, Sunday. Uh, but anyways, without further ado, let's look at the uh, trades and deals of the seven Metropolitan teams that made a deal. Uh, the New York Islanders are absent from here as Lou Lamorello maintains his annual tradition of doing nothing at the trade deadline, uh, which does annoy a lot of Islanders fans. And uh, excuse me, he has made moves, he's but uh, hasn't made too many. Uh, these moves are all the moves that have all the trades, I should say, that have taken place. Uh, since January 1st. So it's not just trade deadline moves, it's every trade that's happened since January 1st. I forgot to mention that in part one, but now I've said it here. Anyways, once again, second time saying without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. Carolina Hurricanes were bigger buyers than they used to be, and uh, I wouldn't mind if it works out for them. Obviously, uh, as an Oilers fan, I'd rather it didn't work out for them too much, though it'd be cool to have a reunion in the finals, uh, hopefully it goes the Oilers way in my opinion. But anyways, about the Hurricanes, uh, that little ramble there should tell you uh, my excitement for their moves on their behalf. And I'm sure a lot of Hurricanes feel the same. They received uh, Jake Gensel and Evgeny Kuznetsov. Um, the hockey guy here on YouTube has often noted how much Pittsburgh and Washington seem to be tied at the hip. For the last couple of decades and it's proven here as well as they both traded a player that was integral to their respective cup runs to the Carolina Hurricanes. Jake Gensel is a bigger name. Uh, he's been a very productive player uh, in his own right not just as a winger to Crosby but in his own right has been extremely good. Uh, Pittsburgh is retaining a quarter of the uh, salary. His contract ends at the end of this year so it could be a rental uh, but we'll see. Uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov, he has one more year left on his deal. He's at $3.9 million, and Washington is retaining another $3.9 million for Carolina. Uh, Carolina is also having, or not, sorry, also lent some money to the Toronto Maple Leafs, and as a result received a couple six-round picks from uh, the Leafs. In getting the Gensel and Kuznetsov, they gave up, as expected, Decently sized packages, which includes Michael Bunting, uh, four and a half million dollars. Uh, Vil Ville Koivunin, Cruz Lucius, Vasily Ponomarov, and Cade Weber. Uh, Cade Weber went to Toronto, and those are the signing rights. Uh, and those first four players mentioned all went to Pittsburgh. They gave up a second round pick to Pittsburgh, a third round pick to Washington, and a fifth round pick to Pittsburgh, as well as. $0.688 million for Ilya Lubushkin's uh, contract so Toronto can hold on to him. There are some conditions on some of the picks Carolina gave out. Uh, their second round pick, well, it's not their second round pick. It was Philadelphia's second round pick that they had that they gave to Pittsburgh, which uh, would be swapped out for Carolina's first round pick of this year if the Hurricanes advance to the finals this year. And the other pick they sent to Pittsburgh also has a condition uh, in that it only transfers if the Hurricanes win the cup this year. Uh, next to the Columbus Blue Jackets for the first time in a very long time, went through a deadline without Yarmo Kekulainen at the helm. Uh, they received Alexander Nylander from Pittsburgh, Malcolm Subban from the Blues, and Jakob Zborl from Boston Bruins. They also received a third round pick from the Bruins in 2027, a fourth round pick from the Rangers, which becomes a third if the Rangers reach the Stanley Cup Finals with Roslovic playing at least half the games, and a sixth round pick from Pittsburgh, which could become a third if Emil Bemstrom, who they gave to Pittsburgh, scores six goals with the Penguins this year. Uh, in getting those things, they let go of Bemstrom, as mentioned, uh, Andrew Peake to Boston, who is hoping to... Uh, upgrade their defense, and Jack Roslovic to the Rangers, as well as future considerations to St. Louis. Uh, of note, Jack Roslovic uh, 
half of his salary is being retained by Columbus, and he is actually from Columbus, so I'm sure uh, some Blue Jackets fans are a little disappointed to see a hometown, uh, a, a decent hometown player uh, leave. Not That doesn't mean he won't come back, but still, anyways, uh, the Blue Jackets feel directionless at the moment. Um, they have have a lot of troubles to get through and a lot of crap to work out. And it's not all entirely Yarmo's fault. Yarmo, I think, well, he's done the best job a Columbus Blue Jacket GM has done, but that's a pretty low bar. Um, they, they really need to figure things out, uh, which has been voiced by their players as well. But they do have lots of young talent. And this deadline was just to get a few more picks, really. Um, next, New Jersey Devils. Uh, they did not get any major goalies uh, changes. And some people are mad at Tom Fitzgerald, GM of the Devils, for not going out to get a goalie or at least soon enough. But I don't, I don't think it's like the market for goalies was really expensive. The Devils would have had to give him up, given up a lot, and it would have been very likely that people would have been just as mad at Fitzgerald for giving up uh, what was probably being asked for than not doing so, because Calgary wasn't in a rush to trade uh, Jacob Markstrom. Uh, they s still seem connected to UC Soros, who I never believed was going to get traded. Um, so Devils did what they could to get Jake Allen and Kakonen, both goalies I respect. Uh, neither goalie is having like an incredible season. But it, they need to change something up. They need to try something. So they got rid of Vitek Vanasek and sent both of their other goalies down to the minors and are going to run the Jake Allen Capo Kakonen uh, duo. Kakonen has been admirable in San Jose, uh, perhaps having a better defense. Uh, still an injured defense, but a better defense um, might stabilize his numbers. And that would be the same for Jake Allen. Montreal's defense hasn't done too many favors for Allen. And Allen has had some good seasons in the past. Uh, the Devils also got Curtis McDermott from Colorado, as well as four uh, middle picks, a second rounder from Winnipeg, a third rounder from Winnipeg, a uh, fourth rounder from Dallas, and a fourth rounder from Winnipeg. In get getting all those, the Devils gave up the signing rights to Bartikov for to Colorado, which I don't think is going to be a big loss. No offense to the player. Again, they might make the NHL, and hey, these guys are professional players. I'm not. So whenever I say they're probably not going to make the league, I don't mean that in offense in any way. I say that with all the respect that is due to a professional player. I feel like I should say that. Uh, but going on to players who probably won't make the league is Cole Brady, but he has a goal. You never know. Those are very crazy uh well, yeah, they are crazy. Uh, trajectories is the word I was going to work for, but goalies are, in fact, crazy themselves, and I was looking to the, for the word trajectory to say that they have crazy trajectories. You never know. But uh, they gave the signing rights to Dallas. Uh, they got... Or no, they didn't get... They gave away Colin Miller to Winnipeg, and also going to Winnipeg was Tyler Toffoli, and New Jersey's retaining half of the salary. Uh it will be pointed out mainly by Calgary fans that Tom Fitzgerald received less for Tyler Toffoli than what he gave up for to get Tyler Toffoli, which, yeah, is going to be a point of embarrassment for the Devils, but I don't think that's like a huge deal. The value of players changes over time. Uh, the Devils also gave up Vitek Vanasek, as mentioned to the Sharks, and a third round pick to Montreal. That third round pick can, becomes a second if Allen plays at least 40 games in the following season and makes and the team that he's on makes the playoffs, but it doesn't specify which team. Uh, the Devils also gave up a pair of sef seventh round picks. One was Nashville's, which went to Colorado, and their own that went to the Sharks. And they're also spending one just over a million dollars in cap space on Chris Tanev for the Dallas Stars. Next... The New York Rangers, when it loads. There we go. So we mentioned the Jack Rossovic trade earlier, where the, the Rangers are only taking half of his cap hit. Uh, they got Chad Ruedal from the Penguins uh, for you know more bodies as injuries will happen in the playoffs, as I keep saying. Uh, Nicholas Patan, an AHLer uh, from Minnesota, and Alexander Wenberg, who should offer some 
a good, I'm going to say middle six. It could be bottom six because the Rangers have lots of talent up top. Uh, but Wenberg is a capable, capable middle six player um, with some interesting lore behind him that we don't need to get into. Uh, Seattle is retaining, excuse me, half of his salary. Rangers didn't give up too much notable. They didn't get too much in return, but they also didn't give up too much away. Uh, Turner and Elson, another AHL contract was given in in return for Patan. Uh, they gave up a second round pick to Seattle, a fourth round pick to Columbus, which could become a third if the Rangers make the finals this year with Roslovic playing half the games, a fourth round pick to Pittsburgh, and Dallas's fourth round pick to Seattle, uh, which becomes a third if now Lundqvist had scored 55 points between this season and this or and last, which isn't probably going to happen. That condition came from a previous trade when the Rangers traded Niels Lundqvist to the Dallas Stars. Uh, next, Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, the most notable trade here is that got a lot of attention and is a bit older is the Drysdale and Gautier trade. I think it was a good trade. I think uh, it was really good for Anaheim. I'm really excited for Cutter Gautier. And I think Drysdale is an incredible, uh, or has incredible potential as well. Uh, I don't like the way Philadelphia fans reacted to the whole thing. I understand that they might feel a bit betrayed. But at the end of the day, that's not really an excuse to send a teenager death threats. So... Um, <laughs> I, I think Philadelphia fans, as they tend to do, took it all wrong. Um, if you are a Philadelphia fan, happy to have you. Welcome. I, I, I don't mean to like, you know, push away fan bases, but I, I really don't think there's any defending death threats to Cutter Gaudier. Uh, I know it wasn't all Philly fans. It's just, it's just a reputation they've gained. Anyways. The trade was still good, and I think Drysdale will be good for uh, the Flyers. He's a $2.3 million cap hit. Uh, the Flyers also got Dennis Garion from Nashville. Uh, they got Ryan Johansson from Colorado, who they immediately waived, and an excellent penalty killer in Eric Johnson from uh, Buffalo. I accidentally said that Philadelphia got Eric Johnson from Philadelphia. That is obviously wrong. They got Eric Johnson from Buffalo. You know, I can change it right here as I continue with the rest uh philadelphia also got a conditional first round pick from colorado the condition being that it is top 10 protected uh that is for 2025 so i would assume that it's not going to be a top 10 pick but you know anything can happen uh they also got a second round pick from anaheim and a fifth from vegas uh so uh decent hall another first round pick it feels like the plan is still the same despite Philadelphia's success this year. Uh, they did have to lose Cutter Gautier, but they still got a really good prospect in return. Uh, they got some grit in Eric Johnson, which might flourish with uh, Tortorella. And perhaps most importantly in GM Danny Breer's eyes is that first round pick. But in getting those, they lost, as mentioned, the signing rights to Cutter Gautier to the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, Wade Allison went to Nashville, Mikhail Vorbyov signing rights, went to Vegas, and Sean Walker went to Colorado, uh, thus the first round pick in return. They also got, uh, lost, sorry, lost a fourth round pick to Buffalo and a fifth rounder to Colorado and are paying just over a million dollars for Noah Hannafin in order for Vegas to have him. Next, the other Pennsylvania team, the Pittsburgh Penguins. We mentioned a few of their trades already. Uh, being Emil Bemstrom from Columbus, Michael Bunting from Carolina, uh, Koivunin from Carolina, Lucius from Carolina, Pano Morev from Carolina, uh, second rounder from Carolina, with which could become a first if the Hurricanes advance to the finals, and a fifth round pick if Carolina uh, wins the cup. They also got, among all that, uh, Forgive me if I mispronounce this, but I'll try my best. Kashkovic, uh, AHLer from Minnesota. They also got Ludovic Weber, an AHLer from the Panthers. And 
the fourth round pick from the Rangers, which was mentioned earlier, a seventh rounder from Florida and a seventh rounder from Chicago. I believe there might be conditions on those last two seventh round picks, but I didn't uh, find the actual conditions. I just saw that there might be some. Um, anyways, so in getting those, they lost Will Butcher, an AHL or two, Minnesota, Magnus Helberg to Florida, who has uh, been more or less an AHLer, but will provide a uh, good backup for the Panthers in case there's an injury. Uh, Alex Nylander went to the Blue Jackets and has already done quite well for them. Ram Pitlick went to Chicago, and Chad Ruidal, who had been on the uh, blue line for Pittsburgh for quite some time, to the Rangers. They also gave away a sixth-round pick, which becomes, as mentioned earlier, a third if Emil Bamstrom scores six goals with the Penguins this year. Uh, I didn't believe Gansol was going to get traded. I I don't know why I didn't write that Jake Gensel was lost. <laughs> but I, I feel like I didn't have to mention it because it's on everybody's mind. Uh, but yes, they lost Jake Gensel and they are retaining $1.5 million of his $6 million salary. Um, I, like I said, didn't believe Jake Gensel was going to get traded. I th figured, you know, Kyle Dubas, I believe that Kyle Dubas wanted to trade Gensel uh, before management did, but I believed that Dubas wasn't hired to rebuild, he was hired to reload. And trading Gensel isn't re reloading, it's more of a rebuild move. Uh, Gensel's contract is up at the end of the year, so he could come back to Pittsburgh and resign. He, he could do that. Uh, but I I didn't think Gensel was going to get traded. And then when the Oilers beat Pittsburgh, it just, it just felt like watching them i was like okay this team really is just not feeling it um and so i think dubas had all the reason he needed to make that trade um i f because again i think he wasn't hired to to trade away against or any of that he was hired to build this team up but there was just too many issues left over from the previous administration uh that he uh, had to make the trade obviously crosby is quite hurt by that but I think the fact that Dubas got Eric Carlson in the offseason does show that Dubas tried um it's, so it's not going to come off as like a betrayal this new GM is ruining us as, or is ruining the fro the roster uh whether it was needed or not that feeling is probably not going to be there because he did try um but again there was just a lot of issues that Dubas had to already uh work through anyways that trade happened uh most of the haul was prospects who uh could be in the nhl very soon that was early reported well before the trade happened that that was what dubas wanted he wanted uh he prioritized prospects over picks which suggests that pittsburgh does not want a big long rebuild they want to get going now and if they are tied to the hip with washington as the hockey guy keeps saying and he has a point uh that lines up because Washington has quite a few age, young AHL players who are advancing faster than expected. So they could be uh, back in contending for playoffs uh, sooner than later. But hopefully sooner is while Ovi still around. And for Pittsburgh, sooner is hopefully what with Crosby, uh, Malkin, and Latang and Carlson too. Uh, next and last is Washington Capitals, who this page is a lot shorter. They made one trade. They gave away Evgeny Kuznetsov, as previously mentioned, to the Hurricanes for a third-round pick. The Capitals are retaining half of Kuznetsov's cap, which uh, his salary, or not his salary, his contract is done uh, next year. Uh, it's been pretty sad for anybody, but especially Washington fans and Kuznetsov fans, to see uh, Kuznetsov's drop-off. I think a lot of it is mental. I'm not exactly sure the source of all of it. I'm sure there's going to be jokes and uh, speculation, as there always is. But uh, I, I would assume it's mental. I don't think a guy's skill just immediately drops off or his age, or his age is out just, just like that in a matter of a, a year. Because it began last year and was very notable and very easy to... Watch. There wasn't. Well, it's just Snake Bin. No, it was. It was off. So I think it was mental, and I think had a new 
scenario for him is going to be really good. Uh, a team that is a bit more youthful and a bit more, or has higher hopes, being the Carolina Hurricanes, may help with that. And for his sake, I hope that's true. Um, because it, it, he was a good player and it, it was good to have him. And I'm, I know Ovi's missing him. He he could use somebody who can give him a slick pass because he's not young enough anymore to be able to make, do it on his own. He uh, He's become the passer for the Capitals. Uh, anyways, I did mention my thoughts on the Capitals and where they're at right now with Pittsburgh and that. Um, they're kind of in a more... They, they've recognized the fact that they, a rebuild is probably right. But... Uh, they're to their credit. This is one of those times where it's okay to ignore the business end of things and uh, salute the fact that they've had Alexander Ovechkin, uh, one of the greatest players of all time, arguably the greatest Russian of all time, and in my opinion, in many people's opinions, the greatest goal scorer of all time, uh, one of the most entertaining people to have uh, to watch, and uh, pretty much if everybody's favorite Russian, I think. Um, so I think that they're just, you know, they're always going to try for the playoffs while he's there, but it's kind of going to be like a soft rebuild. And as I mentioned, the Capitals have a really good AHL roster full of young players. The Hershey Bears are AHL uh, affiliate, won the Calder Cup last year, and is the best team in the AHL right now. So the Capitals might not have to wait long for a rebuild. We'll see. Anyways, that is it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Please tell your friends. Uh, commenting is a is a huge help and boost for me. Uh, lets me know that this is uh, that that uh, this isn't just going. These videos aren't just going out into the void because uh, I do enjoy doing them. I do enjoy researching all this and talking about it. And I and I'd love to have your feedback and uh, have your thoughts and listen to them. Uh, so please like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and comment as every person on this platform says, but it is for a reason. And uh, for me, I, I would appreciate that mental boost. But anyways, the view, I am also just grateful for, even if you don't do any of that, I'm just grateful that you made it this far and watched this much and all that at jazz, uh, whether you used me as uh, white noise or genuine information. But that's it for now. I will see you when I see you.